Um, I am going to be talking today. This is Trina and Ask Trina Anything, and I love to share some insight with you guys. Please know that everything I share with you is my opinion, things that have worked for me, not necessarily going to work for everybody. So take this with a grain of salt. Some of the fun of this is just being witty and sharing um, some of my life's experiences along my path. I've had quite a road. I'm 47 years old. I have three young children. I have a wonderful husband. And um, our lifestyle is unique compared to a lot of our friends, our family, and um, people that we hang out with sometimes. So it's kind of fun to um, be a little bit different, but it comes at a price too. So that's some of the things I like to explore. If you have any questions for me, it doesn't have to be about skincare, it can be, but it can be about just about anything. And um, I'd love to share some insights. So you can email me questions at t3 at primallifeorganics.com. I will try to get to all of them. Um, but the question for today, there's two questions actually I lumped together because they're very, very similar. The first one comes from Allison. She says, I have a 15 month old son who I'm raising paleo style. My question is, as he gets older and is in school with friends, how do I keep him on the paleo path? I keep, I think all I can do is show him a good example and how uh, now and hope he con continues on his own, but any tips and tricks to keep him from succumbing to the typical American diet and lifestyle? The next question is from Sue. How do you raise paleo kids? My hubby is not, and eating healthy has been challenging for us. Okay, so let's dive into these just a little bit. Okay, paleo. We all know that it's eating real food, okay? So we can't scare people off and tell them that we only eat paleo, or we can, and it's kind of fun to see the reaction. But um, let me just say that, um, the first thing I have to introduce is the idea that you can't make someone do something they don't want to do. This goes for husbands, this goes for wives, this goes for children. Everyone knows that a two-year-old has their own opinion and their own mind. And sometimes you can influence that mind, but you can't always change the behavior unless you do some sort of modifications and change your attitude, but you sometimes have to look within yourself. And that's what is very difficult to do sometimes. Sometimes you have to, re I, sometimes my hardest thing is to step back from a situation and figure out how I should act instead of react to it. Because when I react to something, it either strengthens what they do or it makes them want to do something else. Um, if I just act and I plan what I'm going to say and I don't react, sometimes they just go, oh, well, this isn't fun anymore because I'm not getting a reaction. So anyway, my point is you might have to start with yourself because everything really boils down to you. I'm lucky because my husband is um, totally in line with me on diet. In fact, he's the one that introduced me to the paleo diet and he started the whole paleo thing, the whole paleo movement in our lifestyle. We both work out regularly. We're both very active. We both have a great insight on how, to, how we wanna raise our children. So we're very in line. If you're not in line uh, along those things, like um, Sue says her husband is not paleo, it's going to be a little bit more challenging, but it doesn't mean it can't it can't happen or that you still can't have a healthy lifestyle or instill those values into your children. But I think that sometimes you have to start with yourself. You have to own it. And by own it, I mean you can't waver on it. You can't be paleo today and not tomorrow because when people sense that you are wishy-washy on something, they don't take it as truth. It's the same thing when a dog senses that you're afraid of them or a cat. When they sense it, they know it and it makes you not believable. So you have to own the fact that this is what you do, this is your lifestyle, and you have to make up your own mind that this is how I'm gonna live my life. 
if you preach about it, most people will tune you out. And that goes for your kids too. That goes for your husband. That goes for your best friend. You can't preach about it. You have to live it. So my best advice for people raising children is to own it yourself. I am paleo about 98% of the time. My kids are paleo, I would say probably 80 to 90% of the time. The times that they're with me, I feel like I have that control still. They're young, they're seven and they're five. So I am in charge of what comes into my house. I own that. I don't buy junk, I don't buy crap. And I'll tell you how I, um, the term I used since they were really little, I used a term for food that I, was not paleo and I call it not food. So a cupcake is not food. So when they ask me, can I have a cupcake? I go, that's not food. Just so you know, that's not food and that's not going to nourish your body. So if you choose to have that cupcake, I just want you to know that you're not doing your body any favors. And if you eat that cupcake in about a day, maybe not quite a day, maybe a couple hours, but sometime down the road, you may not feel so good. You may have that sugar buzz and then have that crash or your tummy may hurt or whatnot. Your symptoms may, be, may vary. And I try to remind them of this when that happens. So if they eat that cupcake, I don't harp on them for eating it. In fact, they love it. In fact, my daughter, who's seven, would eat every cupcake on the tray if it was set down in front of her and I wasn't watching. And I have to laugh because when I was seven, I would have done the exact same thing. If I harp on her, she's only gonna want to eat more. So I have to let her make the choice, but I have to, it's my responsibility, I feel, to explain to her and remind her if she doesn't feel good later why she might not feel good so that when she's faced with that decision again she knows that that's not food and i might not feel good and instead of eating two cupcakes maybe i'll just eat one so i do the same thing with my boys and my boys are not as um big on sweets and treats they do like treats and we call them treats or we call it not food to get it in the brain and in the mindset that this is not something that's going to nourish your body but my boys are a little bit um they have more stamina they can kind of um ah, i made my very own my very own natural low sugar raspberry sherbet. I think that's what you said. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Yes, and that's the other thing I do. I try to find healthier alternatives for them. So instead of having the treats that are loaded with gluten, I try to find more of a gluten-free or a paleo treat for them. It, uh, but that is something that's still under my control. What I'm looking at more is when they're at school, or they are somewhere where it's not in my control. It's not what I brought in for them for a treat for the class. It's what someone else brought in as a treat for them. So my whole point is I don't overreact to things like that. At their age right now, I can still manage what I bring into the house. As far as a husband goes or a wife that isn't on the same terms, I think the philosophy is the same. It's a mindset that you own. And you can't force that mindset on anyone. And if you own that mindset and you live your life with that mindset and that um, responsibility, they can't help but notice my kids know that I don't eat treats. In fact, on the rare occasion that I do, they remind me, Mom, you don't eat treats. It makes me feel good because they know and in their head, they're going to remember someday that mom doesn't eat this, so I probably shouldn't either. It's a lifestyle, it's a choice, and you can do more with your own actions than you can do with words and with harping. So that is my advice, if I have any. I'm lucky, like I said, because my husband's in line with me, but my husband does like treats as well. So he's a little bit like when we go out to dinner, he'll be right there with the kids lining up the treats and what they're going to have. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. But um, what about your husband? What about when your husband feeds the kids? Okay, question. When my husband feeds the kids, um, 
I just got a phone call, so I hope that didn't interrupt it. Sorry. Um, when my husband feeds the kids, like I said, he is paleo, so he um, does feed them paleo as well. What, what's a typical dinner for us would be um, like chicken, and we eat a lot of raw stuff. We don't we don't cook a whole lot. Um, sometimes I'll cook like green beans and things like that, but for the most part, we have raw red peppers, raw carrots, raw cucumbers. Um, sometimes some fruit, not a whole lot of fruit because just try to keep the sugar content lower, but lots of fruit, lots of vegetables and, um, then like chicken, some sort of meat. Um, we're kind of like an, you know, easy going five nights a week. We eat at home, maybe two nights a week. We eat out. When we go to a burger place, we get a burger with no bun and we eat, try to eat as healthy as possible. Um, but when my husband is home with the kids, I'm going to be going out of town next week. He will, he, he will eat very healthy with them. Um, they will eat, they like the gluten-free pizzas. I'm not a very big pizza fan. Um, so I can pass on that, but he'll probably make a gluten-free pizza and some chicken for them. Um, so it's, uh, healthy and it's better than alternatives. And he does a really good job because he, um, cuts up the vegetables and puts them on their plate and he actually makes them eat them a little bit more than me. One of my tricks that I get um, to get my kids to actually eat their vegetables is, in, you know, when they don't want to eat them, I just start stealing them off their plate. And then they're like, oh, mom. And I'm like, oh, gosh, this is the best red pepper I've ever had. And uh, if I'm eating it, then, of course, they want to eat it. So um, that's one of my tricks for getting them to eat the vegetables. So um, does anybody have any questions or any comments? Um, like I said, these are my opinions. And I can't express enough that I really believe it's a mindset that you have of yourself. And when people view you and they view you happy and healthy, they want to know what you're doing and they want to do what you're doing. And they start asking you questions because when they ask you questions, when my kids ask me questions about something, I know they're interested and that's when they want to learn. That's when they have the teachable heart. So if you open up your, um, your lifestyle so that you can you can be happy and healthy and you can invite those questions, then getting their mindset ready and um, exposed, it's not going to be as hard. And when they're in school and they're exposed to things, um, that they, they are going to have the options available. They're going to know that they have a choice. And that's the important thing is to let them know that they have a choice. The choice is theirs and they have to own it. And that's why I let them make the mistakes. I let them have the treats when they're available, um, not every day. And it's not an everyday option. But when it happens, I don't deny them of it because that's part of being a kid. It's part of learning. Um, I learn best when I make mistakes. And when I feel crappy the next day, that's how I learned that things don't agree with me. So how can I teach my kids that something's not gonna agree with them if they don't get to feel that something doesn't agree with them? So anyway, that is my answer for the question of raising kids paleo. And I hope that I gave you guys some insight um, and that it will help a little bit. It's not an easy job and kids are challenging and difficult, um, but fun and the challenge can be exciting as well. So. Good luck with it, and rem remember to send your questions to t3 at primalifeorganics.com. I'm here for you, and I wanna answer your questions, and I wanna know what you wanna know, um, because I'm more than happy to share anything. And I know someone asked a question recently. Um, I never did write the blog post about how my sister cured my nephew of Lyme disease, and I'm gonna see if I can get her um, to do a little Skype interview with me, because. Um, it was amazing how she treated him with Lyme disease and literally within 48 hours, he was better. So I want to share that with you guys. And I never did get to write the blog post, so I apologize for that. But that'll be coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. Thank you and have a great day.